So when I was 22, I thought it was a good idea to move to Hollywood. I move out there and I have a, like a, a meeting set up with an agent. That goes well and I'm in proximity to all these jobs. It's just gonna be easy. It was hard. The grind wasn't something that I was really prepared for. I had to, had to make ends meet. So I got a job working at this restaurant. And while I'm at this restaurant, these girls come and sit down. And they ask me right away, like, hey, do you want to be an actor? And I was like, yes, that's why I'm here. But what they said next, I wasn't prepared for. They said, do you want to be in the porn industry? And they invited me to meet with their agent. And I meet with their agent, and I knew that this was not a place that I should be, but I, I went anyway. And this agent asked me a few questions. He said, what do you want to accomplish? I was like, well, I want to be an actor, and I guess I want to be famous. And he's like, great, that's perfect, because you'll be able to go further than you could ever imagine. You'll be famous, you'll make all this money, you'll be the guy. People will know your name. And then I agreed to do one. I was like, sure, okay, I'll do one film. And doing that one film, I felt shame. I felt guilt. And then afterwards, I remember looking at this check and just thinking, what have I done? This scene had essentially gone viral and my name was attached to it. And then I was kind of dating someone at the restaurant that I was working at and then I told her what I did. And all of a sudden, she's telling me to take a hike. I'm humiliated, I'm ashamed. I don't have friends really anymore. I can't go back to that restaurant. I don't have a job anymore. And then I get a phone call and it's the agent and me saying, hey, do you want to sign a contract? And I didn't know what else to do. So I said, yes. And that one film turned into six years and over a thousand films. I made the money, I found the success, I accomplished being famous. And when I was at the pinnacle of my career, I won Performer of the Year. It crushed me. Because I thought once I won that award, I would be happy. But it didn't work. It left me empty and broken and disappointed. And it actually didn't fix the pain that I had. It actually escalated the pain. It deepened the depression. And I found myself in a place so deep and so dark that I was certain that I didn't have a life ahead of me worth living. And I started contemplating what would it be like to take my life? I didn't feel like there were any going back. I didn't feel like I would ever be a husband or a father or contribute in any capacity because who's going to want anything to do with me? My life felt like it was over and I wanted it to be. Joshua didn't even exist. I went by a pseudonym. I was called that pseudonym on set. I was called that pseudonym in real life by my barber at the gym. I didn't exist. I'm walking into this bank and I was going to deposit this check and after I slide this check across the counter, and, and you know she gives me the receipt and I go to walk away. She looks at me and says, Joshua, are you okay? 
and what she didn't know that it had been almost a year since I had heard my name. And it crushed me. So I ran home and I called my mom. The next thing I know, I'm picking up the phone and I'm quitting, calling my agent, my PR person. I'm putting on a press release, I quit. And I run for my life. I moved back home with my mom and I just applied to every gym in the area. And finally a gym called me back and they hired me and I moved to Raleigh, North Carolina and started working at a gym there. But I kept being recognized over and over again. And it was just so humiliating because all I wanted to do was not be that person. I just wanted it to stop. I just wanted to be me. I worked my way up in this gym um, to a management position. And this girl walks in and I ask her out on a date. And she says, no. <laughs> she said, no. Um, and then she came back a little, a little bit later and said, okay, well, we can go for a run. So I, I agreed to meet her. She gets there and we started walking and talking. And I was like, hey, I need to tell you something. I, I've done a little bit of porn. And she was like, what? Did you, what? I was like, okay, man up. Just tell the truth for once. And then I told her everything. She looked at me and said, you know, a person's not defined by the worst thing they've ever done. And a person's not defined by the greatest thing they'll ever accomplish. She said to me, I believe God defines who you are. Do you know who God is? So I was like, yeah, I, I know who God is um, because I grew, I grew up going to church. I even believed I was a Christian. And then she prodded a little deeper. She was like, okay, well, what's your relationship with Jesus like? What's your prayer life like? And she started to ask more questions, and I just didn't know the answer. And then she was like, so do you like tacos? I was like, what? <laughs> I couldn't believe that she didn't reject me. And then she invited me to church the following Sunday. And then we, we go to church, and... I walk in and there's this big plaque and it says, we want to love people as they are and encourage them to grow in their relationship with Jesus Christ. And the pastor started talking about that we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So we're all guilty and we all are separated from God and there's nothing we can do about it. So we're all deserving of death. What can we do? Jesus dies in our place when we're at our worst. And it just, it, it met me where I was in that moment because I believed that there's no way that someone would die for me. There's no way that someone would see value in me, I saw God for who he was. And that day, the Holy Spirit just softened my heart and I, I gave my life to Jesus. And the beautiful part of that story is that girl that I went on that walk with is now my wife. And we've been married for six years. We have three kids and God didn't stop moving there. And then I get interested in theology and I end up going to school and getting a degree in biblical theology. So for me, the way that Jesus has become very real in my life is that he gave me a new purpose, and it's because of His love for me, it changed everything about me. I'm Joshua Broom, and I am second. Thank you so much for watching this film. And we want you to know that we've provided you with some resources to take your next step. So maybe you are hearing the gospel for the first time and you want to know what does it mean to follow Jesus? Or maybe you want to find what is available to me to find freedom 
from this struggle with pornography. Or maybe you have a story like mine that you wanna share with the world. Click on the link in the film description below and we will provide you with some resources to do that very thing.